Hi, everybody. Just a thought came up uh, about being deceived. No. I know lately a lot of people are very sensitive about that, watching all kinds of things. Not wanting to be deceived. But the thing is, from the moment that we're born, we're actually raised in deception. And lies are everywhere. People for 6,000 years now have been living in a compromise and in lies. With Either they go into all kinds of spiritual, uh, demonic relations, or n they know the name of the true living God, but deceive themselves that they actually have a relationship with them. Now this is not a judgmental talk. It's just to make clear the line. If there's anything I am given to do as, as, as a son of God is to, by the Spirit, let the Lord show the dividing line in, in me, what is the world, and what is his and to share that insight that God gave for me with everybody and that's basically what we all as Christians do is to share and to encourage our faith and our process with God to learn from each other but number one to learn from the Holy Spirit so uh, a while ago, I was also still watching, listening to many things, also about delusion. And Paul talking about people being bewitched and everything. People in the faith. And it's clear what the faith is. It's in the Word of God. And it comes through the Word of God, through the hearing of faith. But just like in Israel, I mean, we, we as Christians might say, well, if you look at Israel, how many times they veered off the path of God and how soon they disbelieved the, the sovereignness and the hand of the Lord among them, you know, to, to trust the Lord and to go according to his ways, even though they haven't really directly heard from him anything 40 80 years 70 years or longer you could say well look how quick those people back then just veered off the path of God one at one moment they see the miracles their their fathers see the miracles that are by the hand of the Lord uh, guided them out of Egypt, guided them into the promised land, and before you know it, they go whoring, they go uh, being tempted by all kinds of other vanities of their mind and their hearts, because for a brief moment they don't hear or are guided by the intense hand of God, like literally just intense circumstances, until trouble comes every time until trouble comes and humbles them they get on their knees and then suddenly they, re they remember oh wait a minute we, we have a God who, on, who we can call in troubled times that's been the way of the old the Lord chastising his people raising his people and that wasn't perfect it was a chastisement it was a disciplining according to the law of Moses of the old that shows and should have shown also to Israel that they can't they can't the lesson of the Old Testament and the people which is just you and me because they were people just like you and me is that we can't abide by the law fully of the Lord and stay in his way 
we we'll always will veer off. And that's because of our fallen nature. <clears throat> so, waking up in the faith by the grace of God, He shows you things, and you're interested in things, and suddenly He shows me all the all the intense lies and the deception of the devil, and all the unbelief and how they deny Him, and all the intense aspects and details of it, and the working and the workings of it. So naturally, I go into all these teachings and to understand, you know, what what's going on here. And some of those, and some of the brethren, the brothers, that put out teachings, also warn for these movements in Christianity. In the faith, and they warn for the people that preach like the church needs to bring in the kingdom of God or else Jesus won't come or something. The power is given to actual people to bring in the kingdom of God and then peace will be established by the church and the people and then Jesus will sit on the throne. It's an absolute horrible lie that surprisingly many people believe. But not to judge them, it's just the word says it's different. The Lord many a times does things in the Bible, fulfilling prophecy, and he even says, we're going to do this to fulfill what is written, for it is written. The Lord wants to really, even him showing the way as the Son of Man, walking in the law of God, that we should stick to the scripture because that's going to happen. He's actively fulfilling it out. And then there's another... Uh, there's just things that come up in my mind that, that brothers warned against. It's like people that say, God is doing a new thing. Now, God is doing a new thing, but it's 2,000 years old. And it's the new covenant. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because people are just spiritually whoring when that when that when there's like four when Israel <clears throat> and not to say that I'm better because many times I, I want all kinds of things still. Okay. We want things. We are wantonous people. But the being disciplined in the house of the Lord means that you want less and less and you're satisfied by the Spirit of God. Now, how do we achieve that? Well, we'll get there. Or how do we create, how do we put the light to, to, to understand it more? Well, I'll, I'll be glad to serve in that. The new covenant. The new thing that, is, that the Lord is doing. No more with the old. People cannot, cannot follow God in His way and stay in His way fully. So let's go into it. I'd like to start off in at, uh, Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, verse 31 to 34. This is Jeremiah prophesying. This is Jeremiah in the basically seeing the, the captivity of Israel. Because the Lord is making, uh, I believe, Babylon or Syria, I don't know, the, the Persians, taking the people out of their land because of their boredom, because of they, they don't follow God in His way. Certain things happen. Now with us, it's more, with the current believers, it's more spiritual, the consequences. In Israel back then, it's spiritual, but it's... Most, it's, most of the time the consequences are fleshly so when they just straight up don't abide by the law of God they'll go into this iniquity they'll go into this lawlessness they'll go into just people doing what they think is right because everywhere everybody sees well where is righteousness where is the word of God where is the so called uh, synagogue that does the right thing that guides the people right you know and the priests they all just do their own thing what they think is right this is the same here 
Everybody, is ju every church of many denominations, they stick to the Word of God. Praise be to the Holy Spirit. It's, it's the power of the new thing. But still, people don't hear a lot of the, the Word of, uh, of the Lord and His direct guidance. People are filling the blanks, what they think are the blanks. But we think that there are blanks in the faith because we don't, where most people are not fully, uh, have not fully received the Holy Spirit to guide them in all truth. That's why a lot of people fill in the blanks. That's why suddenly, completely not in the Bible. This is just one example. There are many examples. But it's completely not in the Bible that the people of the church will bring in the kingdom of God. And yet, this is, you know, uh, and I don't want to name the denominations, or, uh, but you'll hear, you'll hear of it. And many of these weird traits that people just fill in, uh, you know. And that's just a horrible place to be. You want to be secure by the Holy Spirit in the rest of God. The Lord says, come to, into my rest. Be wary, you know, even. You know, lest you net, not enter into his rest. You need to enter in the rest, and that's by the Holy Spirit. But we'll get there. Jeremiah, seeing all the trouble over his people, people given over to the discipline of the Lord, even by an invading army that will take them away and be slaves and out of their lands. Look at this horrible thing. But he sees, he's, he then gets the Spirit of God to say and to prophesy, and it is written as we speak now, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which covenant, my covenant, they break, although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days said the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, hopeful prophecy. Uh, and the thing is, is many times when the word comes in less intense, I mean, if you're, if you're a Hebrew Israelite and you've just been captured or been as now you're, you're taken away from your land, the country is destroyed, your people and your children and everybody around you, your family is just taken captive and used as a submit, uh, you know, is submitted uh, like a submissive people. It's a horrible thing. And when then, then these words of the Lord come, it's very precious. And it's a hope. And it's uh, something that they oftentimes then give over and they pray and they lament. And it really touches them because of the situation. like to continue but to focus on I will put my law because they couldn't uphold the law of the Lord okay they failed every time and because of the situation how creation and the, and the even the law of righteousness and the law of life which God has in a way kind of embedded in all of creation he even steers these nations against Israel and these things happen because of the iniquity because of you know, they're not upholding the law but they can't okay and the Lord knows this no longer by the covenant you know what which they received out when they went out of the land of Egypt but this shall be the new covenant I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts meaning 
he's, he's going to put it in your heart, not the heart without the law, with the mind in your environment, thinking you know God, thinking you can absorb his goodness, you know, and listening to all words, even in churches now, little kids raised in Christianity and people just generally raised in some kind of belief needs to be in Christ, of course, but all religions, it's man-made. People are raised in these religions. You got to know the Lord and fear the Lord and do what is good and do what is so. But it's it's exactly the same as Israel. So, yeah, the Lord is not anymore uh, a time that people just from the outside try to receive instruction and a good religion towards their hearts to the inside. No longer is that time. It's the time that the Lord puts, literally puts His law in their inward parts, in our inward parts, and write it in our hearts. That immediately is just, it's there in you. Okay, let's let's continue. To a brief moment, John 17, 17. Is the Lord here in the prayer? should read John 17 the prayer that the Lord does to the to the Father and just a beautiful prayer uh, before he's facing the cross and he says sanctify them Lord because he wants us to be one one with him as he is one with the Father that we all become one and it's done by his truth okay because if you were to think uh, what is truth it's of course, if you see everything, everything around you, all that is, comes from one point, and that's God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and all these things. He upholds everything. Everything is found in Him. So He is the truth. Okay. So when He says, "Sanctify them through Thy truth," it's it's God. Okay. It's the Spirit of God. That's why it's also in the Bible you'll find the Spirit of Truth, and the Lord became flesh. And the word became flesh get it so it's just one it says sanctify the lord then pray sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth then we'll continue uh, john 14 16 30 says, uh, verse 16 to 30. this is this is maybe you you know, we've heard it before, but this is very crucial. If you, if you, everywhere, people, believers, but of course, especially in Christ, if you believe that you are in the, in the right religion, in the right belief, in Christ, okay, then Christ is in you, get it? And that's test ourselves and be honest with ourselves and this is the crucial part here this is between this is life and death this is truth or lie this is going into the right path or being deceived by vanities because you don't feel the satisfaction and the rest and the goodness of the Lord in your in, over you over your head over your mind and heart when you sit when you think when you just abide just abide that you can you just you are Wherever you are, you feel the anointing of the Lord and His love upon you as an adopted child. What's the difference between knowing the Lord and feeling, even feeling the Lord? Com that He confirms that He's with you and in you. Okay, let's continue. This is John 14, yeah, 16 to 30, 30. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Just, uh, just to interject, Jesus is just like uh, Israel. The Lord was there with Moses or other men, and that he guided them, and then for a while they don't hear anything yeah and they stray off but this is the new thing praise be to god what he's done on the cross 
making it able for us to receive the Spirit. Unholy vessels, cleansed by the blood, the holy blood of God, for us to receive His Holy Spirit. It still, still boggles my mind because the mind isn't some, something that God is completely... Uh, the mind isn't completely uh, open to receive such grace, such, such a miracle, such a good thing. I think that holds a lot back of what I can do, what people can do with the Holy Spirit. But the heart is important. So, the Lord basically says, He recognizes his, his disciples that they are, He's going to leave now. He's going to die on a cross. He's going to be in this other kind of state. And then eventually He will be taken up to heaven and be with the Father, where He belongs, centrum of the universe. <laughs> Because he is. And he knows this. He's know, he knows they're going to be left alone. And he knows he, they need guidance. Because God knows Israel. God knows people. So he says, I will pray the Father. And he will give you another comfort. comfort that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. So he, here you can see, interject again, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Get it? So it's not because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. So it's not something you can get from the outside in. Get it? You, there's nowhere where you see the spirit in the world or think that people really know them. It's remarkable. I, fi I find it very remarkable how little people really and how much faster people talk about the Holy Spirit. But when, when they go in to the workings of the Holy Spirit and how he just brings this peace upon people and how he preserves you from doing wrong and horrible things by steering you away from the darkness and the filth and of, of the of everything around you and how he sanctifies you by the truth more and more uses the Word of God constantly to oh yeah to remind you and to discipline you and to comfort you and constantly with the Word of God this active presence, this active presence which you really feel, it surprises me how little, not much people preach about these workings because probably not much people have it in, at that level, that when the Lord sanctifies you enough by the truth, as Jesus prayed for us, and you believe that, that by the word of his truth, by the word of the Father, which you need to believe the word of God. It's, I mean, you, you can, if you, if you suffer from the indoctrination of this world and science or all, all kinds of things, and for you the word of God is like oh me trying to understand the word of God, but still uphold this mind frame that's been given to me by the world of science, of psychology, of what is real life, what is what gen and everything. And, and even just pain and suffering, that it uh, still speaks more than the Word of God, what it says. It also holds you back. The science holds you back. People's minds and entertainment, movies and everything, because those are the minds. Those are made. Not, they don't just come from somewhere, sometimes demonically influenced, but many times the mind of unbelieving people are behind these things that speak that sing, that do, that we absorb that and we're raised in that. So the mind is absolutely many times uh, weak in understanding God or even hostile to understanding God. So that's how the Lord sees it, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth them not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you. It's basically the Lord dwelling with them and and he shall be in you. But this is also to be compared with people. Like 
I felt it uh, for the first six years waking up in the faith the Lord gave me his spirit I know this because bit by bit I started to really uh, loathe and fight against things I normally just did and just not just sinful things and this, this uh, darkness it's not healthy and I knew there's somewhere somewhere it's not good to do all those things but then suddenly it really grieved me to do those things and I felt this presence uh, but but more in feeling not, not really a sensation that came later but like feeling that he's that the Lord this is not good this is not good more and more and he steered me away from it gently just uh, exercising these thoughts of sanctification of this is not good this is not good and seeing deeper traits like when I uh, not to go in detail but you know all the things we suffer with you know and but then he shows certain details that I actually see even signs of the devil in, in certain things I watched and suddenly you uh, see a deeper insight in what it really does to people and who are those people in it or or uh, what you did there that thought you had there look at what in the bible says uh, the lord uh, has uh, said about having these thoughts get it and you start to see more the worth of mankind and of yourself and God raises you up basically out of the filth and bit by bit you know and that, from that I could say I, I, I had the Holy Spirit but when he says for he dwelleth with you that's that's the part where the, the, the Holy Spirit dwelleth with me and really okay and the process went and from there on out like the Lord comes to you the grace comes to you because of calling on the name and he's mighty and he, and he, he loves uh, the promise of, of for Abraham and, and people to be saved in the truth and he upholds his promise so he dwells with me which is very remarkable because I was also, was also in good, some good filth and just self-destructive behavior and all kinds of things and then the process comes that he shall be in you so there's a difference for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Get it? This is a process of, because it's still the spirit of truth and the Lord's blood is very powerful and very sanctifying what he did. And if, if you believe on that blood and if you believe his word, it's, it's one with God, okay? The working becomes more powerful more powerful and more powerful and sanctifies you more and therefore you'll be more sanctified and you receive and not that you receive more the spirit but the spirit basically you and because the Lord is gentle it kind of looks like you uh, the Lord helps you to allow the Lord to help you get it <laughs> and that's the grace of God so you go into that process and then he shall be in you and then, and then go, the Lord goes into 18 like, I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you get it so it's not I'm not gonna leave you without my word or without any trace of you know you, you just you just gotta deal with these words I, I, I said in the Bible in the New Testament or whatever and that's it you know, that's that's the thing you got to do with no or even Paul says that the receiving of the Spirit this is the earnest of our inheritance meaning that we do all kinds of things all beautiful graceful charity love each other and and preach the gospel and go in life and and give our lives to the glory of God and at the but at the the base of it is that you receive the spirit and that's the earnest of your inheritance so you can get charged up in a church or get charged up anywhere about things you need to do or or a new movement or a new thing where a lot of people many times are open to be deceived because they they don't feel the satisfaction of the lord really their presence his presence in their lives really to a point well and we'll get there we'll get there that you really feel it so they're open to all kinds of things but then paul explains this it's like 
the spirit you'll receive the spirit and that's the earnest of our inheritance M meaning that for now for this life now until we meet the lord and we'll see him as he is and we'll will and it'll, it'll appear as what we are in him get it we'll get the fullness of our faith and the whole new being new man until then you receive the spirit and that's what you're going to get and that's what you're going to do it with uh, get it he's going to guide you in all truth not leave you comfortless uh, glorify god glorify me the lord says and he will remind you of everything i've said and lead you in all truth get it and many a times it's not something of the world it's not something of the world if you're trying to seek the lord in things that in movements in ideas that are prevalent just prevalent they're everywhere in the world good intentions whatever it is it's not generally it's not spirit filled it's not something of the spirit now we can do good things if there's an organization that helps orphan children you can help you can, of course i'm not I mean, who am i to, to, to say oh you can help or whatever of course you help but The, the good things people do, a lot of unbelieving people do good things, get it? Do these charity things. And people feel it's a human thing to do. That's what the Lord, he made us in his image. And he made us as him. And the Lord cares, so we care. It's, it's, even in a fallen nature, we still care. It's logical. It is logical. But, no. If you, the, 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 the word of God and the Spirit of God, He's holy. Holy is a, is basically it comes from the word that He's apart, He's set apart, He's something different. Get it? And when the world, and when the Lord says, and shows in prophecy that the world will eventually be destroyed, new heaven, new earth, not that it is to be restored. The Lord won't come and say, that, "Well, you know, these are the good parts." And so we don't need to destroy that, but these ugly things will be destroyed. No, the Lord's going to complete the new heaven and new earth. Get it? And there shall be no more pain, no more suffering. Get it? There just be blissfulness, eternity. Get it? And that's the rule of God. That's the goal of God. So we know, and we'll go into scripture more, of what the world really is. And really, I really like to... The, the Lord is really pressing on me to preach the separateness of the world because with especially in Christian society Christian culture people lose sight maybe if you live in a hostile environment you are more raised in an environment that says wow we're really different than the world or something we're all humans and we still need to connect and Paul even says be all things to all men that so, so he says, so I can be all things to all men, that, that he connects with fishermen and he connects with all kinds of people in trades and all kinds of worldly things for the sake of the gospel. Okay, so that's that you have your eye on the gospel. But then we continue. So it, it is his promise. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. This is a promise. Okay. So if you don't, if you don't feel like the Lord has come to you and you feel the lack of comfort, it is because there's something missing. There's something wrong. Depends on how long you're in the faith. Oh, that's true. I mean, everybody needs to grow. But there's something wrong. So he promised this. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world see that me no more. But ye see me because I live and ye shall live also at that day at that day ye shall know that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you it's very strong like the Lord says at that day because he lives because it, it's not like the Lord went away in heaven and yeah yeah I don't know we don't hear or we don't feel or there's no real confirmation so, yeah, what, what really happened with Jesus, you know? Is he like a historical character or... Uh, I'm just going by my outward to inward belief that my parents gave me that this is Christianity and this is good and I feel good 
spiritual, emotional things, and I move greatly with these pas passionate things. But you know, people that some people that like tortoises or dolphins, all kinds of things, and they <laughs> some people can be really passionately moved by earthly things. Okay, and they're passionate. In most cases, they're more passionate about that than most Christians about Christ. So, this is important. The world seeth me no more. The world, the, the, the world has an issue with seeing God, if you haven't noticed. But ye see me, because I live. He lives. He's there. He's active. He prays for us. We have a high priest. Ye shall live also. Get it? This is like this commitment, this promise. Because I, the Son of Man, the Son of God, has conquered this on the cross. This beautiful work. And we love you and we want to see the Son of Man succeed in the image of God, which is Christ. Okay? And he wants to bring us back, the lost sons and the lost daughters. He should, and he's basically powerful. He's saying, because I live, ye shall live also. Get it? It's awesome. At that day, that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him. And I will, again, I will manifest myself to him. Okay? Now this is the part where suddenly my mind my mind triggers into de deception again because this is absolutely beautiful i will manifest myself to him okay he that keepeth the commandments okay loving thy brother you the whole with the whole of your mind the whole of your heart that doesn't mean you, there are passages in the bible you, you find difficult and then you're not giving the whole of your mind but you're going to do your uttermost best to understand them and 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 not to just understand them, but to understand them in a, in a surrender. That not before, not that the Lord needs to convince you, but that you're already convinced that He's God, of the Lord Almighty. So His Word is the Word of the Lord God Almighty. And when the Lord says the Word became flesh, and Jesus, the Son of God, the center of the universe, of everything, you know, walking according to Scripture, even submitting to himself to the word of God that he be crucified and everything and the word says he actually submitted himself to the word that scripture might be fulfilled that scripture will be fulfilled the Lord says and he goes out and, and does the word of God so submit it you know and he's showing the way as the son of men to submit yourself to the word of God even unto the cross yeah, he shows that way it's very beautiful very faithful Lord and I will manifest myself into him so it, this is the part where a lot of people a lot of churches like they're really pressing on against the kingdom of God against the he against heaven but something's wrong I don't know it's not enough miracles uh, in most cases there's not enough real genuine relationship with the Lord because they're just from the outside in they receive these so-called relationship with the Lord is like the Lord is good and and the history of the country and uh, Christian culture and they just receive it from their parents that's it's something good I find it remarkable uh, that, that, that there are even Christians that can still stay in the faith and go with it to a point where they really come to receiving the Spirit, that just so shows how, how the Lord's Word sanctifies, because they're not raised with this idea that they're enemies of God, most of them. Uh, there are that preach that, God bless them, but most born Christians, and and I'm talking about even other faiths, Catholics and, and Muslims and everything, but it, to say how. Uh, to what extent they really believe in God because they don't know Christ of course if you don't know Christ you don't know God because it's, it's revealed in the Son who the Father is but it's, 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 it is this 
outwards to inwards process and it just it you know to some people it doesn't get into the skin to some people you know it doesn't get into the flesh it doesn't get into the bones it depends on some people you know it depends on their life circumstances but for a real Christian it doesn't depend on your environment or your life circumstances it depends on whether you receive the spirit in a confirmation or not okay the Lord says I will manifest myself okay until then bless your holy uh, endeavor bless your uh, and I sanctify everybody's heart and I'd just like to bless you that please continue to, and as I will to continue to to be sanctified by the word and to believe the word that it might do that cleansing effect like when you read read it not as like you're you're studying history or studying uh, like how to formulate a way of going in the faith that will bring you to the power of God or like these things it's not it's not meant to be so it's a, a humbling it's nothing I wouldn't say nothing but but it's mostly it's a humbling take it easy take you know I've done this I got this spirit you know keep yourself from the world you know that you be find blameless guiltless and blameless before the Lord and he that overcomes the world the same shall be saved get it so there's this process of just back off back off of what for how you've been raised back off of how you've been thinking back off from how you invested yourself or how or how it, your movements or your churches or your organizations or whatever think you need to be in you need to receive the Holy Spirit come into the rest of God you know and he, and he and he'll abide in you and from there on out you'll grow hopefully to the point somewhere maybe in the end time or I do believe that great great things will happen in the end time but it's through the Holy Spirit and it's true and it's through this rest you're gonna have in the Lord that really will bring in the power of his gospel and his love that it, 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 it's it's not gonna be people you're not you're not gonna be charged with the power of God if you you have we have a lot of people that actually just are waiting and desperate for miracles and all kinds of things and they're just ripe to be plucked by the devil to be deceived because great signs and wonders will come great deceptions will come the Lord will say because of they you know they veer off and they just don't are not sanctified by the truth and come and humble themselves and just surrender as as little children get it little children don't have in, in their thoughts all kinds of things get it they just surrender to the father to the love to the care to the embracing you know to sit on the lap to be embraced get it and they have that rest and that safe secure feeling that i'm adopted by the holy spirit in jesus name and the lord made it all possible again and from there on out maybe you know you'll grow a little bit and do so some great things but people are a lot of times way ahead of themselves and just right to be to come under this what the Lord says the great delusion and he, the Lord even says in those times I mean uh, that if uh, those days will be shortened the Lord will make the less days for the Satan to deceive because if the days would just continue even the elect even his chosen could be deceived get it it's so intense so intense I mean even the elect could be deceived even you know people with the Holy Spirit and everything because it's just so intense get it but the more you exclude the world the Lord's why does the Lord say this that even the elect could be say uh, could be deceived I mean you have the Holy Spirit right you have the uh, seal of the promise no, it's intense he's showing you that 
and he's telling you, that, look, this thing is intense, okay? <laughs> you know, I mean, he's basically like, I'm the son of God, and I needed to die on the cross for you to be saved, okay? Even when you think you're kind of this nice person and do good things all the time, or from the beginning, but even before you thought you knew me or whatever, I needed to die for you. I needed to be tortured for you to be accepted and to be in the beloved uh, that, that the Lord is. To, for, for the Father to see you in the beloved, good son. So it's very intense. And you'll, you'll have, you'll be less open to be deceived. Not by, oh, just, oh, like, uh, well, how a lot of people go in the end times, uh, teachings and everything. So, oh, you know, and they try to find out the mark of this and what comes then and so and so and all kinds of other things. And then people just, uh, like a spaster, last, uh, just, just watched a little bit and you know, like, uh, goes into the word of God. And he says, the King James Bible, uh, and only the King James. Now, I love King James and I, People should actually just have the King James. But Dutch people have a Dutch Bible, you know? So uh, there are other Bibles out there. Get it? So, but he's then, he's like so pressing on the, the, the like every, anybody else will be deceived by any other Bible. And there are horrible Bibles out there in other modern translations. I would recommend if you can speak, if you can read English and understand English, the King James. But He's like, oh, King James and King James this and any other thing is not the word of God. Any other thing is not the word of God. So, well, you know, there, there are Spanish Bibles. There are other Bibles. Get it? It's the Holy Spirit. People go overboard in these things. But as, the, as Paul says, you know, we, uh, we have not received the spirit of fear, but of love, power, love, and of a sound mind. And... In the, in the Dutch, it actually says like a, a mind that's stable in things. It's like the, not, not too much, not too little. We don't overreact in things or underreact in things. And that's the Holy Spirit. You, you just come into this rest. It's like people that, when you have the Holy Spirit, it's like this man that comes into a situation, may it be intense or whatever, but, and, but he has nothing invested in this situation except certain maybe maybe certain souls to be saved in the gospel get it you can you it's the point that god seals you with his promise and you're his and you're for that kingdom that's coming you have your hope in that kingdom that's coming and because of the spirit you feel like you really are adopted in that king for that kingdom that's coming and bit by bit he just makes you not want all kinds of things of the world and to be attracted by these dece this deceptions and that's also the process where you can build confidence is that the Lord is really your your witnessing with him and the spirit being a witness is that you're really being bit by bit pulled out of the desires of this world get it and that's your confidence also in not being deceived later on and being also disciplined in the body that mortifying the deeds of the flesh as Paul says that, 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 that a lot of things that our bodies still want and constantly press for, press upon, is also becoming less and less. So, it comes eventually, it all can come to the point where when you hear the Lord say, Be ye faithful even unto death, and ye shall receive the crown of life, that it wouldn't be even that intense to you in your heart. You, uh, you hopefully not fear in the moment when it comes, just let it be quick. <laughs> <laughs> but you understand it get it uh, the, the, the absolute self-sacrificing scripture parts people don't completely relate they're still like well this life here now and I want to live good things now and they're still waiting on some powerful moving thing now and this is not this is not that's the, that's of how much that's in you or in anyone or in any movement that's how much you're susceptible for the grand for the great delusion that's even coming so the lord says i will bring a, i will let this great delusion come upon them 
And many shall leave of the faith. Many shall leave. Yeah, there, shall, there will be a great falling away. They shall believe lie, the lie. And they shall believe the doctrines of devils, all these things. And it's not to be judgmental, it's just we can all be deceived. The Lord, the Lord says if the days weren't shortened, even the very elect could be deceived. Get it? So it's, it's like, he's like, it's intense. Child, it is intense. Okay? Not to bring panic or discomfort, because the Lord wants to just to seal you. That's the process of the Spirit. It just puts you apart. Okay? And I get we still need to be in this world and still fight for these things, but the people, most people, God's the the people that God still has His eye on because He He's going to do it, but He wants us to experience it, His great work experience through us. He wants to help us be judge judges of matters and and uh, number one to care and love, but to judge matters and also you know like. Uh, be built up into being a servant of, of the house of the Lord, get it? Do all kinds of good things. And, and this is basically this kind of a training ground because as the word says, then know ye not, ye shall judge angels, get it? So eventually even mankind will judge angels and r rule over regions. The Lord says, you know, I'll, uh, you know uh, I'll, I'll set you over certain regions, you know, in, the, in, in his kingdom and everything. So it's, it's it's a remarkable thing what he's preparing a lot of people for. But the main thing is, is that your soul is secure with him in all eternity. It's going to be a long talk, I think. Sorry about that. But let's continue. Yeah. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them is he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and I will manifest myself to him Jesus uh, Judas uh, let's see if I yeah I'll continue quick Judas said unto him not Iscariot Lord how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me, he that loveth me, not keeping my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring you all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I go because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass ye might believe. Hereafter, hereafter, after the cross, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. I think we can all agree. That we're experiencing that that the lord is not talking much with us <laughs> <laughs> and this is the problem back in israel is they for a while they don't hear the word of the lord and it goes every time many times it goes horribly wrong for the prince of this world is coming and has nothing in me okay. jesus many times my kingdom is not of this world Bless my, uh, my, or else my disciples would fight. I am not of this world. Ye, ye, ye are not of this world, as I am not of this world. Get it? Maybe I'm pressing a lot of the separation of the world. 
and I, even I, the Lord by the Spirit, judge myself. I'm like, am I am I this secluded person? Am I really a, like an anti-world kind of guy? Just like, oh, this world, this life. Oh. I'm not. I'm. I was. I was meant to be quite social, and I am quite social guy. Okay. I like to be around people, but. It's better to be with the Holy Spirit than to be with things and sounds and everybody that make you doubt and are not of God. So in the beginning of my faith, like when coming up to 10 years now, I knew as soon as he started to wake me up, I knew I can. I, I couldn't continue with my friends that I had and wasn't like very strong friend relationships compared maybe to what it could be I don't know I never had a good example but I knew it I knew from then on out okay this, this, it, it went on still like you know quite a while six years basically then after six years, it's absolutely less of them. They and they got their girlfriends, and we all parted ways and everything. But I like that. Not that I have anything against them. Still, I'm still good with them. They're nice guys. Nice, okay. But I knew the Lord is setting me here. On a, on a, on a, he's showing me so much, and. He's guiding me so, and the things that other people say and think, this is not the same path. And our path is not even to be crossed, or it's not even to like, okay, let's see how I can get into some kind of compromise or something. It's like, I feel, and it's just pulling me away and just separating me. And... Uh, even from even from very even from kind of worldly Christians, you know, it's also a separation. And sometimes it's hard, but I like I rather have forty years of more like uh, less social something than to be misled in all kinds of things they, they have constantly things spoken around me not not people they don't do it aware or look or so certain looks and you just you can see a little bit bit by bit you can see more how you're different than the rest not to be better it's just a sad thing all over basically but it is something that says you, you know you're different I'm setting you on another course you have I have something else for you okay and it's not against scripture it's not uh, trying to glorify myself it's it's even kind of hard I mean sometimes you wish you know, maybe it's a bit much the separation but I, I would have it no other way get it and that's the thing. If you're not experiencing that separation from the world, I fear for you. And I, and and not only just like, a, oh, you need to be separated from the world. It's just this this spirit of truth. Who the world cannot see, cannot receive, because it's not in it. Get it? So if you if you have a lot of sounds, a lot of voices of the world, and or from preachers that don't fully believe the Bible or you know are, are also clearly this worldly compromise because because people are now so compromised and in churches that it's a normal thing you know it's a it's even coming up to like oh, the, the, you know decent and you know what, what are you gonna do be super spiritual about everything live in a monastery or, or live somewhere in nature or you know what are you gonna, you're gonna meditate all day what are you gonna do it's like, well, I'm telling you that with the spirit, it wouldn't even be that weird 
to meditate all day. You know, it's just uh, my body and my things and my mind you know, wants to do things and do other things. But the law of spirit is definitely a spirit that just wants to put you in rest. You know, you can do your job, but you know you're separate. We can, if, we, if one could find a job where, you know, you, you'd be not around people that constantly uh, blaspheming and just be giving off these bad vibes. It is. It's not something that the spirit was, would disencourage you to do. You know, he would. He would separate you. And I just hope that everything could go in grace, and according to the guidance of the Lord, and not just that we're just grieving, pained, and sent off in all kinds of places because we can't handle a uh, correct distance from the world. So that's it. The Lord, He will. He won't talk much with you. But it will give you the spirit. That's And that's the part. Eh? That's the part. And just continue uh, a little bit more fast paced. Is uh, John 14. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were there. Okay. We go continue. Okay. We'll go into Matthew, but first I like to interject. It's uh, in the Bible, the sins of Israel. Everything is often compared many times with whoredom, whoring themselves out, giving themselves to these doctrines, these vanities, these devils, and. Uh, it's a horrible comparison, and I don't like to uh, insult anyone because you know even I can recognize it myself. Is that many times when there are prostitutes or whores, people or people that give them themselves away quickly, and not just the sex, okay? They give themselves away to all kinds of mischief, mischievous things. Uh, if, if it be stealing or money or whatever, they give their souls away and their bodies away. To, to these things. What you see many times is that, and it's a proven fact psychologically, uh, that they lack the love of their father. They lack the something of a secure home. And often the times, unfortunately, women that, you know, it's a symbolic thing. Because it hits really exactly right in the comparison is that it's whoredom and many times it is like this this fatherless girl a girl that has not been properly loved or cared will often at times give herself uh, away in an improper manner now I was wasn't raised with a dad in the house so psychologically or spiritually many things can be correlated even I uh, with my life but it's not to go into detail or something but th there's a certain self-destructive behavior that more was more uh, what I got from that but that's not to say that if my dad lived with me or we were one complete family it would be all right maybe I was a little bit less damaged but you know then um, uh, as the Lord says you know uh, you, one that is forgiven much will love a, will love much. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's good. The Lord is good all over to everybody. But it's this, is that spiritually we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And you actually at a certain point when you block out enough of the world together with the Holy Spirit, you'll feel, you'll feel it in worship. But you need to surrender Surrender in worship okay, and believe the Word of God so that it really talks to you and that when you read it, it reads you and that you're like, oh, this is in me and this is so and it really hits you and 
then you're starting really to be moved with the thoughts and the mind of God, how he speaks, how what is wrong, what is good, uh, where he has his joy in, where he has his secret joy in certain, certain things, he, and he opens up his heart, he's open up, the Lord opens up his mind and who he is in that book, okay, so that's your direct relation from uh, the foundation of your relation is the word of God, you know. But then the the consummation and the, and the sealing, the completing, to 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 the point where you say, "Wow, I receive the Holy Spirit. I am a son and I am a daughter of God." That you become, you, He disciplines you, and His words really strike you, and you fear also His words as a father. You know, like you ought to, you, you ought to be disciplined. And that will that will cause you to to be shaped. Uh, many many children are loved to death. Basically, it's a horrible sentence, but they're loved to death. Parents that, that didn't receive much love or whatever, or they just have this mindset that you should love a child and you shouldn't really discipline it like that or something when it's when it's rebellious. They love that child to death, but the thing is, a lot of people can try to exercise love, but there is good love and there is bad love. Good love is that you care about the child, that it grows into a decent man or a decent woman, and has his or her mind straight about what is right and wrong. And it requires discipline. It requires the child fearing his parents to a certain degree that when they say things with authority, with with what is good and what is wrong, the child absorbs it. You know, like people would absorb intense things, you absorb it more, you remember it more. It could be a little bit more intense. Okay. The thing with now with you, if you just have this religion belief that you just it's made for you it's to satisfy you your emotions and your pain and your things and let the Lord uh, speak to you and to do you a, a favor or something that's that's not the discipline okay that's the child that just receives constantly what it wants or should receive constantly what it wants or something. You get it? You get a spoiled brat. And it's, if you if you have been like, well, what's wrong with people today? It's spoiled brats. That's what it is spiritually. The same thing with Israel. At a certain point, they they you know, they're like, well, well, you know, we got everything. You know, like it's been good. We have the peace. We have our land. We have these. We have abundance. Abundance. In Sodom. Gomorrah was destroyed because of abundance and idleness. Because at a certain point they they were well, we more than enough and they just, you know, basically forsook anything. That's good. And people are just left you're just left open and wide to the reproach of the devil. When everything is about you and and, and, and uh, you need recognition. Something, what's crippling our family, our body in Christ now is everywhere, everywhere, people are looking for their own, for their own good. Get it? Because they're not being satisfied by this Holy Spirit. And I get it. You know, it's not that I uh, judge them or something. I have these traits in myself. But it's big, but when, as soon as you receive the Holy Spirit and you grow in it and you become conscious that it's there and you feel Him, you move more and more these things aside because the Lord just pushes you to move these things aside and you'll feel Him even more and more and more. And then just this feeling comes over like you're this child that has His Father, that you've been raised in this good house and it's been he's been you've been disciplined in what is good and what is wrong and 
you're not this woman that's gonna whore herself out to false doctrine or something that the, the power of God is waiting to come upon you and all these things that you think still belongs to you as a, as a believer in Christ that you should be a great thing or that these things this prosperity should, should still come to you or this is this great ministry of so and so that's you know, seen or something like that now I know a lot of them have their base in something good in, in a heart that really wants to do something good according to the word and the goodness of God to spread the gospel but it's like we are a mixture with this world in our faith and you should be less and less a mixture and that's why the Holy Spirit moves you towards just the Lord and His truth and to be in the rest so you won't give yourself over to all kinds of things, activities so you become less this mixture but because many people are, are these mixtures you just have the good part about people but they also have that worldly part and the Lord won't manifest his power in, the, in these mixtures yeah, and that's the point where, why the power of God seems to be less present in the churches is because they're simply, simply put, a compromise they are these centuries of a compromise with the world <clears throat> many of the preachers are compromise and they preach and they have their positions and they're secure they're secure in their positions because they are well in ministering this compromise get it they they just take the world part of everybody and they're in themselves because they are and they take the belief and they just make this intellectual slash spiritual or bring in the word of God here so we, so we do use the word of God so you can trust it and then they just make this mixture and it's a horribly logical thing to do because that's what we do as people we're raised in it we, you're shaped by it you you know I mean if somebody's raised in it and shaped by it can you blame him personally but that that's where the word comes in it testifies Jesus says the I testify and the Lord Father testifies of me that my words are true and that what I do is true and who I am is true get it so that the word is true and that's why it's important to fully believe the word the, the word because people are gonna compromise this falling away is gonna come you need to believe the word and believe it fully when the Lord says I will manifest myself to him Praise be to God. It, it wasn't me like uh, reading that sentence. <clears throat> I was like, oh, okay. My intellect says, well, Lord, if you will manifest, this is a promise. Yeah, well, even by intellect, you could come there. If you really believe, like, by intellect, okay, well, I know the Lord uh, by intellect. All these things that has been written, he fulfilled, and all these things come true. So by intellect, I know everything that the Lord here does is true and will happen. So... I'm going to believe that he will manifest to somebody that really loves and keeps his commandments. Click clock. So you could, you could even come to faith that way. But there's a humbling in it. But it is, it is, it is a thing where the word and God, who God is really strikes you instead of just trying to grab onto it. It's like, it's like, it's like, believers born believers or other that not coming into this the ceiling of the you know the ceiling the spirit completely adopted it's like them trying to grab something and just you see it in, in worship and everything and everywhere it's like they're really trying to pull it lord lord and open up the heaven and they we want something we want something we want your presence we want this and i i just bless the lord and i just like to help everybody in it that's why i'm putting this out is that it's more like it strikes you than then you need to grab it get it so I'm like what's wrong here what's wrong here what's different about how the Lord is with me and then others or I don't know because I hear many people like the Holy Spirit and sometimes talk about it and the people weep it's like I would like the Holy Spirit like that and like many and not not that I am something special or something. I know this is just what God does. He gives the spirit to people. And 
there are different things that happen. There are people that quench the spirit, okay, that grieve the spirit. Grieving the spirit is if you constantly keep on the voice of death of this world in your life, in everything you do, and you do the news, the movies, the the things, the the the, the, the secular thoughts, the the. the the, the movements, even Christian movements and, and, and Christian pastors, but they are just compromises because you know it that they're compromises. Get it? If they, if they preach the cross and they preach repentance, okay, and it's, they just strike you hard with the blood that is shattered. They just basically, they, well, if you don't have a preacher that basically in, puts in your mind that the cross, you're standing at the cross and you, and, he, and Jesus is suffering and looking at you, the Son of God, okay, tortured on the cross to death. And if he basically, if that preacher is basically not just grabbing that blood that's dripping from his feet and sprinkling it in your face, and you need to repent, you need to repent, look what has been done for you. I don't know, get it? You're going to have a preacher that's a compromise, or you're going to have a, somebody that's just trying to soothe your itching ears just get it you know it's it's what itching ears want to hear is he's gonna just tell you exactly what you want to hear to i don't know to deceive you that'll be enough for most a lot of those satan workers that'll be enough just to deceive christians and to keep them in confusion keep them in wantonness not sealed by the holy spirit not believing the word but trying to believe in themselves there's nothing in you to believe except if with the Holy Spirit would come I'm glad that after six years that you know uh, okay I started to, to the Lord gave me the strength to surrender to worship in the church uh, in the church house <laughs> so really a little, a little bit afraid of churches because I watched a lot of things that people be deceived and all kinds of things but I learned the Lord said here in my Psalms, these people are singing beautifully. It's a beautiful environment when people worship. And he, it was a battle. It wasn't one, two, three, um, worship, give over. Yeah, Lord, Holy Spirit. But it was a battle. And I worship, and you give over, you give over. And you start to feel the manifestation of the Spirit. And it's just beautiful. Okay? And... Maybe not everybody will feel it to a, like a physical sensation uh, over the head and sometimes, sometimes or completely through the body. And especially when you're in more spiritual moments in your life or fasting or all that part. So you, but try to worship every day. Get it? You need to worship every day. I mean, or else you're quenching the spirit. You know, and everybody that believes gets it to a degree. Uh, just like what I said, uh, the first six years, he pulled me out of that darkness, but I didn't feel yet... A physical manifestation like a really a sensation but yeah surrendering and then giving over and he him helping me with that but the part that helped because I was really charged about being deceived in churches and all these things especially modern churches uh, and trust me this is also just so one of the compromising churches because they're basically all compromised compromised churches okay that's that's the it's a it's a normal thing it's, it's horrible to say but it's, it's because I heard the Psalms they're singing the Psalms yeah, Lord these are your lines these are the words and this is the Word of God and I can trust the Word of God so this is good and I was able to surrender and I it's like oh this is nice man this is beautifully put it's according to Scripture and then you loosen up and, and it helps you to worship so it's a lot of things about music and worship that really releases the soul onto him because you, music really grabs even the secular music it really grabs people out of that physical intellect state and really you get more into the spiritual no without christ i don't recommend it's not really good but worship believe the word you know let it let it strike you let it strike you like a person that's in war like in the trenches get it you're a soldier in the trenches and the men's lives and you are you're dependent on it or else you're gonna burn and die in this war 
and intel precious precious intel where that people died for soldiers died for that intel to get get that information up to hq and hq comes and this this blessed of the feet that bring in the good news the gospel the good intel that the lord is getting and you receive that intel and you're glad that you have information it's it's to be compared with that the word of god it's like you really you know it's your life is dependent on it get it it's intel that will it's between life and death okay eternal life and eternal death get it it's a serious thing it's not a it's not a just a good thing that you know from your parents from the culture and you know you know and you you belong to it because you associate yourself with the good stuff that the lord is of course we all do that anybody would like to associate himself with good stuff it's a natural thing to do but it's different with the holy spirit the world doesn't know him you are not of the world as i am not of the world get it Like to finish off with the Matthew 4 uh, verse 15 to 17 well yeah well Jesus was just baptized by John and he uh, well he had the temptation by the devil 40 days and then he comes to the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan Galilee of the Gentiles the people which which sat in darkness saw great light and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death light is sprung up to them which sat in the region and shadow of death light is sprung up from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom is at hand. Okay, first of all, it's you can trace it in the Bible, and it says here that Jesus began to preach in the, in the land of the Galilees, okay, beyond Jordan. Jesus did not begin to preach in close to Nazareth, Jerusalem where he was born he went from Nazareth to Galilee okay and a lot of his ministry and a lot of what he did was around there Get it? so it's remarkable because he knew the Jews and there's the state of their hearts okay so you let's let's say if anybody's like looking for where is God God gonna start to do more work and in this time, eh? Because we, before time now, we don't see much of him doing what he does. We, you, we might just see God suddenly moving more outside of the realm where everybody thinks that they're really Christians, okay? Not in the middle of Jerusalem, where Zion is, where the, the place of the faith of Abraham and Jewish religion is but around and above in these other parts and the Gentiles these are people that are mixed people they're less Jewish basically and all kinds of things of course happen they're less religious so you could say that there's more mischievous things going on there but the Lord has something with people it's like the tax collector the person came up to the temple it's just this uh, guy that just gave himself over to the roman empire to do their taxes and do horrible things and and he comes to the temple and he's just disgusted by himself and he smites his chest get it and he says lord forgive me and he, he he's, he's not even able to look up to face God like look up and he's just bowing his head because he knows he's a sinner and, and compared to the Pharisee 
that went to the temple is like, Lord, I thank you that I'm better than all these other people and that, you know, and I abide so and I, you know, guided by thy law and this and that. Even better than this publican here. Is like what they call them publican. Is that the taxpayer, is that, that guy? Jesus says that the publican wasn't able to face God with all his things that he did, unrighteous things was justified and the Pharisee was not even though he did according to the law did everything right or a lot of it right he thinks he does but he has not the love of God in him because the Lord says I know you have not the love of the Father in you to these people that are religious that take their the disciplining or they take their the righteousness from, or they take the knowledge of God from the outside in. They don't have it in them. So we're glad that the Lord died for us on the cross and shed his holy blood, fulfilled scripture, even in Jeremiah and many places in Isaiah, where he would suffer for us. And by his wounds, by his stripes, we are healed because of the curse coming upon him. And he took the blow. By that blood, we sanctify ourselves. I mean, it's precious blood. It allows the Holy Spirit of God to come and live in you. Get it? So, imagine this, that the Lord kills his son. He, he sees all the people. He sees a, a multitude of people all damned to hell. From dust you came to dust you'll go, Adam. That's, what the, that's the situation. We're born to die to, and to not be in relationship with God, with life himself. If you don't have a relationship with God, you don't have a relationship with life itself because he's life. Then the Lord, intense as this, this darkness is that's in us and given over to this world and this world in the hands of Satan and death and sin. He, the Lord says, my blood, my sacrifice, me is stronger than this curse that's upon them okay so he kills his son and you, this blood is used to cleanse us okay to redeem us okay so he's basically sprinkling this blood over us you know let's say it's a comparison but it's clear what happened for you to believe on the son that he rose from the, from the grave Get it? So, this blood cleanses you, you re and therefore the Holy Spirit, because you're cleansed, the Holy Spirit, pure Spirit of God, can come and live in you, so you can believe on Christ, and that He rose from the dead. Get it? And I live, as I live, ye shall live also. Because I live, ye shall live also. I'm just using that comparison so you could see it in front of you like somebody just you know, killing his son okay or this person needs you know his blood was necessary for to sprinkle on you just imagine it everybody's doomed intense intense damnation okay you need you 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 people need this blood right now Right now, you need this blood on you to save you from what's coming. Right now. And then quickly, everybody just gets blood on it. For you to just go and still commune, still give yourself out to the voices that deny what happened there, that deny the power of it. For people, how can that not humble you? The Son of God, the Righteous One, the Holy One, was murdered. Was, and it needed to happen for you to be redeemed. Can you not believe His Word? Can you not strive to, Lord, I humble me that I can come in that place where you give me the Holy Spirit and I can just, the, by, by the rest and the peace that's then upon me, 
that it's that it's witnessed that that the power of your redemption that it, in the peace and the shalom that I'll have in even the end times and all kinds of intense times therein they'll see the, see the power of God and what, he, what you've done on the cross Lord have mercy on me that I gave myself over and and still am not fully committed even I I mean I, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking out of own experience you know? that we're still allowing these voices and these desires and these things all kinds of wantonness to dictate our faith and our walk that lead us that just instead of the path being straight and make make straight the way of the Lord it just swerve and goes left to right forgive us Lord that we fight against thy Holy Spirit that we find it difficult to submit and that we rather have the, the bustle and the hustle of the world than your holy peace and your rest and your shalom for our soul to heal and to acknowledge the might and what is done on the cross for our souls to be preserved into life and our hopes to completely pull it out of the world and put it in you in your kingdom that's coming as the bright as the bright shining sun you'll come as the lightning in the east and this is seen in the west so will you come in so will the coming of the son of man be nothing else great how great the movement how great the wonders whatever out there whatever voice is out there Lord please help us to focus on your word and seal us with your Holy Spirit Lord God Almighty in Jesus name by the and anything that stands against it any deception anything we open ourselves up to that keeps more revelation back of who you are and what you've done for us on the cross and how it's completed I plead your holy, powerful blood against it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you all.